from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. How do I need to structure the investigation so that students are empowered to find the answers on their own? What do I need to do to support that? Do I need to gather the resources beforehand? Do I need to put them in special groups? Do I need to help them work in subtopics? And then we'll pool it all together to come to the understanding. It depends on the understanding and the access to resources. But today, I'm going to ask you to spend some time I'm looking at primary source documents. In your groups, each of you have documents on your tables. I have been digging for ages trying to find these old documents. Haven't I? Yes. You see how, now you have to be careful with them because they might shred because they're so old. So what you're going to do, as usual, make sure that you read your tasks carefully before you get started. Everyone's going to be reviewing the same documents, but some of you are going to be thinking about primary sources, thinking about things you see, thinking about things that you might still have questions in your mind about, and some of you are going to agree or disagree with some of the uh, scenarios that are on the task cards. Okay? Some of you are in places that are a little uncomfortable, so I invite you to get up and move to where you can be heard with each other and where you can see the documents, okay? So get into your groups. Each of you grab your task. You can start looking at the documents. Get up and move if you need to. So this group, I noticed that you have your documents right away. But before you take your documents, I want you to kind of look at the activity that you need to do. This is the activity that you're going to be working on. So in this activity, you're going to be looking at things you observe. You're going to be recording reflections about what you've seen. And then you're going to be recording questions. If you guys need to get up and move so you can get closer to here, please feel free to do that. And share the documents so that each person gets an opportunity to enjoy reviewing them. Historians, you had an opportunity now to take a look at primary sources. You've had an opportunity to chat with each other about what you may think about some of the, the sources that you observed. You had a chance to think of some questions. And as I walked around, I asked some of you to think a little bit more interpretively about the questions that you were recording. I'd like for you to feel free to just share any thoughts that may have come to mind about what you've seen, what you've thought about, or anything. Anybody want to start? Yes, Juana, nice and loud. When me and Lillian were reading the primary source document that John Jay sent to Abraham Lincoln, it was talking about how, the, how his city was um, was being threatened, so I was wondering where he was sending the telegram from. Any other comments or questions or wonderings? I have a question. The page that we got, um, we don't have the, uh, the same as Awana and Lillian. And Cassie and I, we, it says that it was sent by John Jay, but it, in the, when it finishes, has it has the signatures at, of three other people. So my question was who you actually wrote the telegram then? Okay. Good question. Good question. Yes. Well, from reading the letter from D.D. Seal to Abraham Lincoln, I learned that back then they didn't really talk like we did. They had some weird language. That is an excellent observation. When you look at the language that was used 
1863 versus the language that we use today, isn't it two different worlds? Yes. yes. I know I've, I have my own observation. One of the first things I noticed, what about that handwriting? Look at that. <laughs> Do you see how different the handwriting is? I don't know if you heard me today in um, one of the activities, I refer to them as historians, um, which kind of you know, makes them pull their shoulders up a little bit. Uh, they like being referred to as historians. So it kind of removes the textbook and it kind of puts them in the role of a historian, of someone who researches, someone who asks questions and um, something we're still working on, even questioning the answers. A lot of us know the answers just by repetition, but if we have to think about them and justify them, defend them, and criticize them, that may be a totally different lesson. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.